What is up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Glow Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2024 Ford Mustang EcoBoost, courtesy of Bob Ruth Ford in Dillsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So we are in this one today because this is the start of the seventh generation Mustang. There is a new interior, there's new powertrain, of course, there's new looks, obviously. And this thing is actually nearly as quick as the Mustang GT now, believe it or not. So the question really I'm gonna to leave to you guys at the end of this video is do you get the EcoBoost? Or do you get the GT? Because you'll see why I'm saying that throughout the video. But anyways, in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are a couple different trim levels for the 2024 Mustang. First one being the Fastback starting at $30,920. Then you have the Premium Fastback for $36,400. 45 convertible for $39,020 and then the premium convertible for $41,945 but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant is going to be the same powering the EcoBoost is a 2.3 liter turbocharged four-cylinder putting out 315 horsepower at 5500 rpm 350 pound-feet of torque coming in at 3000 rpm that power being sent to the rear wheels through a 10-speed automatic 0 to 60 time coming in at approximately 4.5 seconds a According to road and track that is insanely impressive and just for comparison's sake the mustang gt road and track clocked it at 4.2 seconds so only three tenths of a second difference between those two so that's kind of the reason why i say do you get the ecoboost or the gt but anyways mpg number is then coming in at 22 in the city 33 on the highway for the fastback 21 city 29 then on the highway for the convertible. Now that I've got all of that out of the way, before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our EcoBoost, do want to mention to you guys the drive modes. So drive modes are now actually located on the steering wheel. I know before there was little toggle switches when I had my 19 Mustang GT, but now everything is on the steering wheel. So it's going to be those silver buttons labeled mode. Obviously those drive modes will include normal, sport, slippery, drag, track, and custom adjusting things like the shift points and the throttle response. But there is still that steering sensitivity mode as well also located on the steering wheel so you can go ahead and press that and that's going to give you that sport steering feel which is what i immediately put it into because that's what i always left it on on my 19 mustang gt when i had that car so definitely a very heavy steering feel we'll get into that later in the video now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and put it in that sport driving mode and let's find a straightaway and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 ford mustang ecoboost here up to speed all right you guys here is our straightaway in sport driving mode in three two one go spin it baby <laughs> that was fun yeah baby that was fun man and it's controllable too like i was laying on that acceleration there and it was spinning but it wasn't that bad like that was a really good acceleration without a doubt and I loved it so you can hear the turbo whistle a little bit too so yeah it makes you wonder like is it worth it getting the GT because how often do you really use the power having been a Mustang GT owner you don't use it that often and 4.2 to 4.5 seconds really isn't all that much of a difference so yeah, it might be worth it getting the EcoBoost I'm just saying but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 12.5 inch ventilated front discs in the back 12.5 inch solid rear disc as far as that braking feel goes let's go ahead and hit the brakes it's firm it is definitely firm as expected as i expected being a mustang owner in the past so it's definitely on the firm side it instantly brings you to a stop but that's just the standard braking setup. So let me go over the performance package a little bit right here. By the way, performance package goes for $3,475. That gives you 15 inch front and rear discs. And that is a Brembo braking setup with six piston front calipers. But it also gives you a ton of other stuff as well, including a Torsen limited slip rear axle. It gives you new wheels, black painted strut tower brace, electronic hand operated parking brake for drifting. So we got an electric mechanical parking brake, but it's just a little button 
button, but if you get the performance package, you can actually have a manual parking brake handle, which allows you to drift. So I love that Ford did that. Front tow hooks, leather wrap steering wheel, paddle shifters, raised rear spoiler, unique chassis tuning, unique stability control tuning, and an upsized rear sway bar as well. So you get a ton with that performance pack. And I know when I got it back in the day, it was $4,000. Then they ended up jacking it up to seven or 8,000. So the fact that it's under $4,000, that's actually something I would probably recommend because that is a steal for that performance pack and everything you get, so I love that. But anyways, then touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get an independent strut type front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. And for the premium trim levels only, you also have the option to get an adaptive damping suspension. It's a Magnaride damping suspension that goes for $1,750. What that does is it monitors each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride, what you do need in this, let me just tell you that. But it also tightens up that suspension during heavy cornering, really giving you the best of both worlds, a little bit better handling there as well. And so since I mentioned it, yes, you do feel a heck of a lot of the road in the Mustang, whether that be my old Mustang or whether that be the Mustang EcoBoost we're in now, you feel a good bit and that's to be expected in a sports car like the Mustang. So I will say that, but having driven Mustangs with the Magnaride damping suspension versus ones that don't have it like this one, it is a noticeable difference between the two. The most noticeable difference, not so much the, the handling, but the ride quality. So you have a so much smoother ride when you go with that premium trim level with the Magnaride damping suspension for sure. And it'll definitely make this thing a lot easier to drive on a daily basis as maybe a daily driver if you wanted to. So I'm just gonna say that maybe for a lot of people it doesn't bother you, but I gotta be honest, when I had mine, it kind of bothered me. You felt a lot of the road. But anyways, touching on steering feel, like I said at the beginning of the video, that's something that the Mustang kills it. It's amazing. So I still have it in that sport drive mode and it is such a heavy feel it immediately points you in the direction that you want to go so 100 a plus when it comes to this steering feel without a doubt touching on cabin noise you do hear a good bit of the road noise and again that's to be expected in a car like the mustang so no issues for me personally i don't have any issues there but touching on visibility i can see perfectly fine out the back so rear visibility is 100 on point and Rain sensing windshield wipers, believe it or not, actually come standard now on the 2024 Mustang EcoBoost. So whenever the Mustang detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. Kind of like automatic headlights, it's just one less thing you gotta worry about. It's kind of convenient, but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Ford Mustang EcoBoost. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Ford Mustang EcoBoost finished in yellow splash metallic, in case you were curious of our exact exterior color name. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number one, indicating that the Mustang EcoBoost is still, of course, built and assembled here in the US. So let's go ahead and start up front because like I was saying, this thing has been completely redesigned for 2024. You have LED projector headlights coming standard for all trim levels across the board. And let me get up a little closer. They have a new design to it, of course. It's kind of like this tri-beam effect, kind of like Lexus does. So that is pretty cool. And I'm sure the illumination is amazing because they're LEDs and they're projector style as opposed to the reflector style. So love that design with LED signature lighting, of course, and LED daytime running lights. You get the automatic feature as well, meaning when it starts to get dark at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. Also get automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night, and since it's the vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you. But you know one thing I didn't notice when I was looking over the specs on this thing, there's cool little LED lights within the front grill here as well. I don't know, I literally just noticed that what are they there for if you know put them in the comment section because they definitely were not there on the last generation mustang so i don't know it's kind of an interesting little effect there and i do like the matte black front lip up front here as well but overall that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the mustang ecoboost all right so now making our way to this side of this one black window surrounds do come standard matte black side skirts of course to tie in together with that matte black front lip 
Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. And I did want to mention though, the premium trim is going to add to that heated side mirrors with LED integrated turret signals and pony projection lights onto the ground at night as well. So that is pretty cool, of course. And they had that last generation. I always like that. But taking a look at the wheel setup, they will of course differ. 17 by 7.5 inch aluminum alloys coming standard. 18 by 8 inch aluminum alloys for the premium, 19 by 9 inch aluminum alloys for the performance pack, and you have plenty of optional wheel configurations available like the ones that we have on this one here today as well. But overall, it does look pretty similar on the side profile than the last generation, except for the back end a little bit. I think that looks more fast backy, if you will, but Anyways, that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, and so I think it's around back where they made the biggest changes for this seventh generation Mustang. But as always, let's go ahead and start up top here. Body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top there, just below that center high mount stop lamp, of course. There is a rear spoiler that is available. We don't obviously have it on this one, but it is available, like I said, with the performance pack, that's gonna give it to you. But LED taillights do come standard. And let me actually check something real quick, the way these are set up. And these actually aren't that bad. Remember in the last generation, they protruded out a little further. So if you wanted to cover them up with like a tint from CJ Pony Parts or something like that, it was a little more difficult to actually get them put on there. But with this kind of style, it looks like it would be a heck of a lot less difficult to go ahead and apply that tint. So I really like that actually. Speaking of, they are LED sequential taillights. So when you put your turn signal on, it's gonna look like the turn signals are sliding from one side to the other. So that is pretty cool. And so just below it all, you will find dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips, and they're going to be quad tips if you go with that performance package. And there is also an active valve performance exhaust yet again available for $1,225, which opens up the valves and gives you much more of a throatier Mustang sound to it. But anyways, we don't have that, of course, with us here today. So having said that, though, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip. And so now since you are around to the back of the Mustang here, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob itself, press that twice, or there is a rubberized button just above the license plate as well. So either way is perfectly fine. Once opened up, cargo capacity is going to differ between the fastback and the convertible. Fastback comes in at 13.3 cubic feet. Convertible is going to come in at 10.3 cubic feet. There's always less space in a convertible, of course. There's actually some, uh, I'm going to call them grocery bag hooks because that's what they look like. They might be tie down anchors or they might be cargo net holders. That's probably what it is. But if you don't have the cargo net assembled back there, you can use them as grocery bag hooks. So I like that. Then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, we actually have an optional spare tire. So I like that too. And by the way, there is a 50 50 50 split so if you do need some extra space rear seats do fold down so you do have some extra space with that but then make our way up to the rear legroom that's going to come in at an extremely impressive 29 inches so i'm being sarcastic of course for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i had so not a ton but the good thing is the back part of the front seats are not plastic there's a little bit of give there so if you did want to try to throw an adult back there Good luck, but you might be able to make it work. But anyways, then make our way up to the front seats. Manually adjustable cloth seating does come standard. Premium trim though is gonna add a six-way power driver seat with power lumbar, four-way power adjustable passenger seat, an active X material, and then also heated and ventilated front seats then as well. There is one more option I wanted to mention with the seats though, Recaro leather bucket seats. They go for $1,650. I do believe you cannot get them heated or ventilated though. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's how it was in the past. But overall though, in our regular standard seats here, I gotta be honest, it's perfectly fine. I have no issues with the seat comfort whatsoever. So I sank into them nicely. The power lumbar was definitely very adjustable. So yeah, seats are perfectly fine for me. Although I'm surprised it doesn't have any kind of Mustang logo in them this year. I don't know, that's a little bit different. But anyways, then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is vinyl with a flat bottom that comes standard leather wrapped though for the premium trim level and by the way we do have an optional package that does 
give us a lot of this stuff today but either way we do have the leather wrapped as well and a heated steering wheel does also come with a premium but the 10 and 2 grips are 100 on the thicker side of things and i like the kind of texturized weave pattern at the very bottom portion of the steering wheel as well that was definitely very nice but anyways then making our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key you got your mustang logo on the one side when you flip it over lock unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate there it's exactly like the last generation key basically but remote start is going to be available for the premium doesn't come standard though and it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my front of the brake and press that bright red engine start button located just by the driver's right knee and so here's one of my favorite changes for the seventh generation mustang 12.4 inch digital gauge cluster and yes that comes standard on every single trim level of the ecoboost i love that so of course when you change the drive modes it's going to have a nice little graphic up there when you when you do change them so i thought that was pretty cool and of course you could check out your steering sensitivity modes up there as well it gives you outside temperature how many miles you have left until you hit empty we got 23 right now so kind of on the low side but i like kind of this throwback uh digital gauge look up here so Overall, I think the digital gauges are absolutely wonderful. But now, let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. Let me start with the overhead sunglass holder. I don't remember seeing that in the previous generation Mustang, so we did want to start by mentioning that. A frameless auto dimming rear view mirror for the uh, premium trim level. You got premium door trim for the premium, aluminum foot pedals for the premium. Of course, all this stuff we don't have with us here today. Single zone climate control comes standard, but dual zone climate control comes on the premium trim level. Ambient lighting also on the premium, but again, we have an option that does give it to us today so i absolutely love that there's a ton of different colors you can choose between i happen to put it on yellow although you can't really see anything right now because it is bright and sunny day here in uh dillsburg but anyways universal garage door opener is going to be available for the premium you get a wireless phone charger for the premium so really the premium gives you just about everything but for us, just in front of the shifter, you have a little bit of rubberized storage. You have a 12-volt power outlet, a couple of charging ports there. And again, I like the kind of carbon weave pattern found just surrounding the shifter. And even on the very top of the shifter, it has a nice kind of texturized pattern to it as well. Electric mechanical parking brake. Again, that can be swapped out. You have dual cup holders and within the center armrest. It looks exactly like the last generation. So it's an okay amount of storage. I don't have any issues with that. And the cool thing is, another little cool thing, is you got some gloss black accenting just above the power passenger side glove box a little bit of a mustang logo etched into that as well i like how they brought the seat material onto the doors that is pretty cool too i like the texturized feel to that but again i will say all this kind of black weave pattern found just surrounding the uh, air vents and just behind the digital gauge cluster and all that stuff i really like that so well done Ford for at least doing that. So that's definitely doing it for me. But anyways, now let's go ahead and take a look at the second large screen that we got in this Mustang, which is a massive 13.2 inch color touchscreen display. That's a larger screen than just about all the other cars that I've reviewed lately. This thing is gigantic. Sync 4 system, of course, Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, factory navigation system is gonna be available for the premium. You got your climate control settings up there, of course, as well, along with your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there are a few of them. Six speakers is gonna come standard, nine speakers coming on the premium, and then a 12 speaker Bang & Olsen sound system is gonna be available option for the premium trim level only. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. It's actually really good. And that wasn't the Bang & Olsen either, and that was decent amount of bass, like more bass than I expected there. Pretty good clarity. Honestly, for the size of this vehicle, that sound system was perfectly fine. So yeah, no issues there. But anyways, last thing I want to mention to you guys on that massive screen is when you do put this thing in reverse, you will find a pretty darn high definition. Well done, Ford. Rear view camera coming standard across the board, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, let me start by saying this one is not yet rated by IIHS, so I can't give you any information regarding that. But front side side curtain airbags do come standard. There's a driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors to tethers to children for the rear car seats, tire pressure monitor system but also coming standard would be lane keep assist lane keep alert blind spot assist rear parking sensors adaptive cruise control with stop and go lane centering assist and a pre-collision assist system with automatic emergency braking and so 
Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts on the Mustang EcoBoost, I love the new tech. You got some massive screens up here. Digital gauges are great. Performance pack is a great option. That's one I would personally go with. But another option I would definitely go with is the adaptive damping suspension, the Magnaride damping suspension, because that is going to give you a 100% smoother ride quality compared to what you get otherwise. And maybe you're used to Mustangs and maybe you're completely fine with that, but I don't know. It's just a night and day difference with just about all other cars that you drive. That's all I'm saying. But the other thing thing is I'm kind of surprised there's no manual transmission available for the Mustang EcoBoost you have to go with the GT for that so maybe that's a reason that a lot of people will be going with the GT and maybe not enough people went with the manual previously in the EcoBoost for them to substantiate continuing to do that but yeah there's no manual available for this one so that's kind of interesting but ultimately again there's only a 0.3 second difference between the GT and the EcoBoost 4.2 to 4.5 seconds to 60 so let me know in the comment section below which one are you guys going with but that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold